What do you think when you hear the next Adam Sandler movie is coming out? Do what? you think it might be good? Leo made a barf sound off camera. <laughs> uh, it's, it's interesting to think about the, for me at least, bad movies. Yeah. I, I've said it before, that I'm a little obsessed with terrible, so bad they're good movies. Yeah. And there are a certain group of actors and actresses who consistently appear in terrible movies. Uh, Vox actually made a... Uh, an analysis, an analysis mm. tool to figure this out. Which actors and which actresses are in the bad movies usually? You know, yeah, the wh worst. Who's, who's always in the worst movies? Right. Vox made a scale, and the actor or actress must have a, performed in at least 10 films, uh, no writing, directing, or producing credits. Okay. Uh, one of these films needs to have grossed $30 million or more at the, gross, at the box office, adjusted for inflation. Okay. And at least one of these films needs to have been in the past five years. So, so they wanted relevant. active yeah. actors. And they want, you know, there are studios where they're known for pushing out consistently terrible movies. Mm. And they wanted to omit that section too. So they do have an answer. So there's no video game movies on this list. Ooh, I mean, maybe hey. if the actor tied to it was in a bigger movie at some other point recently. That's true, that's true. So we have some results. Which actor do you think was in the most consistently terrible movies? The answer is... Rob, Rob Schneider. Schneider. Rob Schneider's in. He doesn't have any movies. positive. Look, he's got zero percent positive. Uh, yeah, I actually should probably explain that as well. Negative. Uh, they put this on a score of zero to one hundred. Zero being terrible, one hundred being resoundingly good. And what we have here are breakdowns: zero to forty-nine is negative, fifty to seventy-four is mixed, and seventy-five to one hundred is positive feedback. Rob Schneider is not in any positively reviewed right. movies, and also Ashton Kutcher, though he's uh -oh. in more mixed movies. Yeah. Adam yeah. Sandler, surprisingly, is the number two. Not surprisingly. <laughs> I, I would argue. You, I thought he would be number one <laughs> well, I when mean, we went into this. Yeah, so did I. Uh, but it makes sense because he cast Rob Schneider in all of his movies. So you think you make enough so movies. So it's his fault. It's all Rob <laughs> Schneider's fault. But he's always like just one guy who goes, you can do it, right? It's always like the same dude. But but I feel like when Rob Schneider is the lead, his movies bomb way more. Where you perhaps didn't like Deuce Bigelow, Mel Jigglow. I actually thought it was a, that was a chick? funny movie. I didn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was like, this movie's terrible, but it makes well, me laugh because they're, it's like overwhelmingly, like you said, overwhelmingly terrible. Like it was almost made with the intention to be a terrible movie. Well, I, I, that is something else I should bring up. These are all based on critic scores, right. not audience, which right. there may be different wear from the mile on those. Uh, you may like something that was reviewed very poorly. Uh, and when, when it comes to the actresses that are most consistently in terrible movies, there is a queen, and she is. She's a queen bee. Jennifer Love Hewitt. Which is crazy. She's still alive? Like, no, she's, uh, she's <laughs> I like her. I know, she so do I, but it's crazy. She doesn't that she can't always get make good choices break. in life. Yeah. <laughs> What was like? Uh, what was last, the last movie she was even her in? Her last yeah. movie was in 2013, a low-budget rom-com titled Jewtopia. Ju well, the name alone warrants the number one spot. Yeah, uh, up close to her is Jessica Alba okay. and Katherine Heigl. What was she in? Like Good Luck Chuck, right? That was like the last. She was in one of the Spy Kids movies, oh, wow, which really? I think is one of her better movies. Oh, which is not. She was much. in the original Fantastic Four. Films. Also a bomb, yeah. yeah. Also a bomb. Yeah. I didn't hate them though. That was a weird thing. Yeah. They were bombs and everybody panned them, but I thought they were like fun comic book movies at the time. Mm, I Fine mean, enough. I again, you know, critics versus what that's audiences true. like. That, and that's true. Those aren't key. necessarily competing for the same thing. That's you might true. be going for uh, audience favor, maybe making yeah. that uh, box office money and not really caring what the the critics think. That's true. When did Catherine Heigl become like hated? Um, when people learned rumors from the sets that she was not a nice person. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah. Because I, I, yeah, I didn't look into it much, but I realized that, that nobody likes her. I, I hate to say it, but that does affect how I feel <sighs> about people. I know. I wish I could reward the best performance, but in my head, I'm like, I don't want a bad person to succeed. That's right. Uh, but and when it comes to uh, predicting really good movies, mm. there are a couple actors that you are uh, same formula flip. worth following. Yes, yeah. the, it's the same formula, but the actors who scored the highest. Uh, the reigning king, which will not surprise you at all, is 
Daniel Day Lewis. Oh my God. What a shock. That He's guy. won many Best Actor awards. And the cool part is that he is so selective. He's made like 11 movies in the past, you know, 20 years or something like that. And none of them are bad. And none of them are bad. That means like he knows what a good movie is. He knows how to act. He knows how to get into character because he's like the most renowned method actor in yes, the industry. I've heard he's scary. He's intense. But he does a good job. I can't imagine working with him as Bill the Butcher. That must have been crazy. Mm -hmm. Literally, he, he was a crazy person. Uh, so Paul F. Tompkins has a great uh, stand-up piece about working with him and There Will Be Blood. I need to go it watch that. Fantastic. I need to watch that as soon Definitely as I Definitely check that out. Uh, there was There is an actress who is consistently in the best movies, mm -hmm. and she is Carrie Mulligan. Carrie Mulligan has it been in mostly good movies. I'm not sure who Carrie Mulligan is. Uh, she was in The Great Gatsby. Oh, yeah. She's been in a few films oh, yeah. that were prestige films. That's right. Uh, there we go. Yeah. It's worth pointing out, though, on that list of the top actresses, uh, most of them are, or a large majority of them are above the age of, uh, what is it, 50? Uh, not a single performer on the worst rated actresses uh, was over 58. Over 58, that's what it was. But here, four actresses are 60 plus who are on the, the highest ranking yeah. side, which includes Charlotte Rampling, Meryl Streep, Maggie Smith, and Judi Dench. I'm Mor sorry, Dame Judi Dench. Yeah, and, and the moral of the story is, be a good actress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. That's a great lesson for me to remember. Um, there was also one last takeaway on this, which is critics are much harder on comedy harder. and action films than they are on drama pieces. So, I mean, you could you could argue about this, about yeah. whether certain actors are being treated fairly or disproportionately or are they funny, overpraised you know, in this. Are they even actually funny? Because I feel like it's hard to be funny. Yeah. But when you're being emo uh, in drama pieces, you have, you know, mentions in the article, there's an emo emotional spectrum that you're allowed to tap into. And that's more respectable. When you're just trying to be funny, it's like, you know, you're kind of playing the same card. It's not for everyone, though. It's not for everyone. Not for everyone. And, you know, some of these movies aren't for everyone. And you, maybe, I'm just saying, I'm putting it out there, maybe it's not yeah. the actor's fault entirely. But are Adam Sandler Unless movies... Unless they're Rob Schneider. But are, yeah, I was going to say, are Adam Sandler <laughs> movies for anyone? They're not for me. They're not for you and they're, they're not, not for me. me. They're Pixels not for anybody, was yeah. a pile of garbage. I didn't, and I, didn't I did not feel good about that. I Come felt on, actually English. really insulted. What up? Anyway, uh, if you want to check out the rest of the results, they are on Vox.com right now. Pretty interesting analytical method. You may disagree with it. And if you do, I'd like to know about it below in the comments. Uh, Leo, thanks so much for joining of us course. this week. You have been fantastic in talking about all of these things. If you want to check out Leo, you can find him at... Oh, you can follow me on Twitter at LeoZombie and at Mr. LeoZombie everywhere else. Check it out. Easy. Thanks, Leo. Thank you. And thank you all for watching.